All right, welcome back from the break or the holiday. I uh, hope everyone had a good Memorial Day weekend. Um, we're kind of gonna kind of ramp this up a little bit. Um, believe it or not, like the semester is almost over. So um, we only have about three more weeks worth of this class. We have a lot of material to kind of scrunch in. Um, I think that the way that the chapters are set up is I'm gonna start breaking them down into different sections so that you're not watching too many videos for, too, for like an extended period of time. Um, so while we may still be in the same chapter, uh, there may be like three or four hours worth of video within one chapter, but I'm gonna break those down into one hour videos depending on how they come out. Um, kind of break this up a little bit. So chapter six is mostly about the structure of higher plants. Um, so kind of how we go about naming and classifying those. Um, and then we'll get into uh, photosynthesis and respiration and then also water relations. Uh, that's kind of be kind of like the basis for this week. So um, unit two one is going to be uh, the week of May 3rd to June 4th. Uh, we're going to describe the life cycle of the plant, some of the functions of the main parts. Uh, we're going to discuss some of those plant tissues and organs, how they are formed and why they are formed. So what role do they play um, in the plant's life cycle? And then also some of the practices that we use to grow those plants that are directed at the specific tissues in the organs. So we have two main classes of plants. If you remember from um, last week, or last, yeah, I guess it was last week. Uh, the last unit, uh, we talked about those angiosperms, and that's probably what we're gonna talk about for the most of this course is going to be those angiosperms, but we also have gymnosperms as well. Um, and those are going to be things like um, uh, anything that produces a cone, so like pine trees, um, cedar trees, uh, mainly our um, coniferous plants. Within those angiosperms, we have monocots and dicots. And so mono meaning one, di meaning two. So um, it's important that we know the life cycle of each of these so that we can understand their growth process so that we can start cultivating them um, to bring value to our production system. So two main classes, gymnosperms, which, our, which are gonna be our pine trees, cedar trees, et cetera, like that, and then our angiosperms, which are kind of what we're used to dealing with. Monocots and dicots from each one of those. And the reason why we need to know this is because many of our management decisions are based upon um, the growth stage of that plant. So knowing what type of plant it is, uh, how it grows is going to help us cultivate and manage our systems. Something uh, to kind of start with for monocots. So the first thing that needs to happen is that plants need to imbibe the water. So water must come into the plant before it can begin to before the uh, radical can begin to emerge and the plumule. So the radical being the root, you can remember that kind of radical and root, and then the plumules is the shoot. So first things first, we need to imbibe water uh, so that the seed can start this uh, emergence of the radical and the plumule. The radical is going to extend through the coloriza and begin to branch out and form secondary roots so that it can begin to take up more water and nutrients so it can start its life cycle and grow into this tall plant. Next, the plumule will emerge through the coleoptile. So that's going to have actually all the, um, all the genetic material that is necessary in order to form the leaves. So we have shoots, I mean we have roots, the radical, and the shoots being the plumule. Next, both the stems and the roots are going to grow. So the roots are gonna grow down, stems gonna grow up. Eventually, flowers will form and we will have female and male flowers. Now, uh, depending on what type of plant it is, you might have both a male and a female, you might have both male and female flower parts in the same flower. You may have a uh, plant that has male and female parts at separate places on the plant and then you might also have male and female plants and that's kind of what we're going to discuss here as we start to move into uh, how we classify these plants. So then next the plant is going to reproduce 
we'll have pollination, which is going to come from the tassel, that's going to form a fruit, which is each of those little corn kernels. And then finally, the fruit will mature, and then finally the plant will die. So corn being an annual, imbibe water, produce radical and uh, produce the root and shoot, stems and roots grow, we form flowers, the plant reproduces, the plant dies. So here just to look at some of the uh, components of a uh, corn seed, we have the coleoptile, the plumule, the radical, so the root and shoot contained right here, and the scutellum. Uh, some of the other sides over here are just part of the endosperm. So the endosperm is going to provide the nutrients in order for this, like this contains, here we have our starch, the horny and the coat, and this is going to contain all the nutrients that the plant will, that, that, that this part of the seed will need in order to form into this corn plant. So we have the seed imbibing water, the radical, so the root, the primary root, then the coleoptile, which is part of the plumule, will come out the top. We will start to have adventitious roots that will stabilize the plant, uh, seek water, seek nutrients, so that we can then start to develop the upper portion or the above ground biomass of our plant. So for dicots, which are typically going to be our bean plants, uh, we always have to start with the seed planted in imbibing water. So step one is the same for both monocots and dicots. So we have the radical. Uh, the biggest difference between dicots and monocots is where we used to have um, in monocots it was the plumule, in the radic um, in dicots it's the hypocotyl. Next, the cotyledons are going to emerge with the hypocotyl. And within that, the apical meristem has two primary leaves, so dicots. Let's look back here. We have one leaf. One leaf comes out and forms. And the way that corn forms is it forms um, on opposite sides, right? So one here, and it, the leaves won't be directly symmetrical opposite from each other. They will be offset and um, have an opposite leaf arrangement. But with a dicot, you will have that symmetry and each growth stage will form with two leaves on each side. So that's another way that you can uh, differentiate between a monocot and a dicot. So next, the meristem is gonna produce more leaves, our trifoliate or true leaves in pairs, dicot in pairs. Um, they'll start to develop flowers, the plant is gonna reproduce and then the plant is gonna die. So there's a little bit of a difference that goes on in, like the, in, in the middle steps in the plant growth and how uh, the plant develops and the way that it develops. Uh, but other than that, pretty much we need to imbibe water. The seed needs to imbibe water. The root is going to, uh, we'll have roots, shoots, leaves, flowers, fruit, the plant will die. Uh, there's just a little bit of difference in the middle there. So here we have the difference in um, the dicots is that we had the plant, we had the radical that comes out and forms the root. The root is going to take up water and nutrients and the hypocotyl is going to bend up out of the soil whereas a monocot, the plant grows straight up out. So this is the, hype, the hypogeal bend is what that is. Hypogeal emergence is what that is called. And so then once that happens, the apical meristem uh, contains the information that will start to form those trifoliate leaves. Plants will grow up and notice that at this X, at this bud, it forms two leaves at each one of these, right? So it will grow up in twos, which is why we call it dicot. So within those, it's important to understand the difference in the plant cells. Uh, those cells then form tissues, and those tissues then form organs. So that's going all the way back to high school biology. Um, the same thing happens in humans. Uh, if you can really think about it, 
Uh, plants and humans are very similar. Just we need plants in order to grow. But we have cells, we have tissues, we have organs. Plant, plant growth and human growth, uh, I'm able to make at least the connection and say kind of like how humans grow. And you'll see that as we get through uh, the rest of the chapters. So we have two cell types. Uh, we have prokaryotic, which are going to be single cells. And then we have eukaryotic, which are going to be uh, multi-cells. So typically our bacteria are going to be our prokaryotes. Our eukaryotes are going to be, um, they're, are going to be us. We are eukaryotic organisms. Uh, plants are eukaryotic organisms. So uh, we're going to form organelles and we have different components to our, uh, to our cells, such as a cell wall. So that cell wall is going to surround everything and kind of keep all the contents of that cell guarded and kind of in a structure um, in its own little section so that it can perform its functions. Next, our protoplasm membrane or the plasmalemma, or yeah, the, the plasmalemma um, or the plasma membrane. Those two are gonna kind of be uh, interchangeable with each other. And then with inside that are gonna be the organelles and the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm is kind of the um, liquid or like the gel that contains all the nutrients and the information um, as like a transport mechanism it allows things to move and be fluid within that cell so that those organelles can conduct their functions here the plant cell components uh, starting at, the, at about 12 o'clock we have the endoplasmic reticulum and the nucleus which is the brain of the cell the mitochondrion, which is the powerhouse of the cell. We have ribosomes, this cytoplasm, which kind of keeps everything in the right place. We have Golgi complexes, the vacuole, which is kind of like the garbage disposal of the cell, all the byproducts of that, of the cellular processes go into the vacuole. It's kind of like the trash can. Um, and then the lysosomes. Oh can't forget chloroplasts, one of the most important parts of a plant. This is where photosynthesis occurs. So photosynthesis in the chloroplast, uh, we have a trash system, we have something that keeps everything kind of moving and then held in place, energy and brain. Uh, the other organelles have some, they do have some function, uh, but these are going to be the kind of the main ones. So we have the endoplasmic reticulum, which is where we are going to form protein. So protein synthesis happens in the endoplasmic reticulum. And proteins are needed in order to build the muscles of the plant, right? We need protein in order to build our muscles, and it happens in the same spot. So for humans, we have endoplasmic reticulum in our cells, and that is what forms the protein so that we can grow. As I mentioned before, we have the chloroplast, which is where photosynthesis occurs. Photosynthesis is going to create the sugars and the energy that the cell needs in order to perform, it, to perform its functions. We have the mitochondria, which is where respiration and ATP, adenosine triphosphate, which is where they get the energy from. And that's in the Calvin Benson cycle and the Krebs cycle. And we'll, go on to, uh, we'll go into that a little bit later. Uh, in photosynthesis. But just remember that that's going to take place in the mitochondria. And so when you're studying for the test and kind of thinking about what do I need to know and all this stuff like, you need to know what the organelles are and what they're responsible for. So this might come out as like a matching question. The nucleus, which is the core of the cell, although it may not be um, exactly in the center, it is the core. This is, the, this is the brain, the central uh, component of the cell. So the nucleus is going to contain all the DNA and RNA, and that's where all of those processes are going to take place. And so the DNA and the RNA is the information that creates proteins, that's going to uh, 
uh, have have an impact on cell elongation things of that nature like how does what are the genetics of the plant uh, how is this thing supposed to grow what um, how long are the nodes what are the leaves going to look like how do they what is their shape um, is it a monocot or a dicot so all of that information takes place in the nucleus and then we have the vacuole um, which is going to be like a storage it's going to have water and salts and surrounded by a membrane uh, it takes up the most space in the cell and then the cell wall is going to provide uh, support and structure for the plant so the way that it's set up The cell wall is not necessarily a living thing, but more of a structural component uh, made up of those pectins and those lignans and cellulose. And then there's a component within that cell wall that kind of holds those things together. Like, so the inner cell wall and the outer cell wall, there's something that needs to, to give that some structure. The plasmodesmata strands of the cytoplasm and also uh, extends from the cell into the cell wall. So plant tissues are formed from the collection of those cells and each cell is different. So we have cell differentiation and each one performs a specific function uh, or is a component of a tissue that makes up an organ. So cells, part of tissue, tissue is part of an organ. Our organs are going to be our roots, stems, leaves, flowers, things of that nature. So there are two types of tissues. The first being the meristem or the meristematic, and this is important for cell differentiation. So is this cell going to go to uh, the root? Is this a root cell? Is this a flower cell? Is this a leaf cell? What is your role in this? And the meristematic tissue determines that. And then we have our permanent tissues. So from the, from the differentiating meristematic cells, uh, we may have the epidermis, which is kind of the outer portion of the plant. And then we have some that are more complex and perform um, in very important functions like the xylem and the phloem. So they already know where they're going. Um, these are permanent, they do not change. Once the xylem is formed, it's formed. So there's no uh, differentiation, elongation, and then some other uh, function. Once you form the xylem and the phloem, it's formed, that's its job, and it's done. So when we're looking at meristematic tissues, uh, we have the apical meristem, the subapical meristem, the intercalary meristem, lateral meristems, so for our apical meristem, uh, this is where the buds and the leaves are going to form from, so whether the, the the leaf comes from one side of a bud or a dicot comes from both sides. So there are three types of buds and leaves. We have opposite. So this is, um, this is the dicot where they are exactly opposite from each other. They are alternate. So um, in, our, in our monocots we have one here and one there, but not, but not symmetrical. So they're opposite and they move up the shoot. And then there are spiral and they happen in a whirl pattern around the stem. So as part of the apical meristems, they form the buds and the leaves. We have three types of buds or leaves. We have opposite, alternate, and spiral. 
So the apical meristem uh, can remain vegetative with reproductive organs at the leaf axils, uh, but at some point in time, those meristems will begin to uh, make the change from vegetative into, reproduction, um, into reproductive uh, growth stages. And we'll kind of go over those a little bit later. But just understand that the apical meristem and the tissues of, involved with those can change and are most likely to change. Uh, so this is a longitudinal section of a root tip and where we have this apical meristem and it will start to differentiate. Uh, we have these axillary buds at the bottom and the leaf primordium, uh, kind of the tips of the apical meristem. Next we have root meristems. Uh, these are uh, how roots uh, grow, they have this protective root cap that is going to protect them as they're growing, so kind of like a shield. Um, they have the protoderm, the ground meristem, procambium, that will eventually become the epidermis, the cortex, and form vascular cylinders. And our vascular cylinders are going to be like the xylem and the phloem. Then we have the subapical, which is behind those apical meristems. Um, they elongate to produce new cells, and then the stem links in between, so the internodes. So we have the apical meristem, which is responsible for um, uh, the development of the buds and the leaves. And then we have the subapical, which is responsible for how far apart the leaves and the buds are from each other. And then also, um, as we, as we mentioned before that we have the alternate where we have two leaves that are not so each one of those buds forms a leaf so we have apical meristem tissue where my thumbs are and in between those are the subapical as the plant starts to grow up. Uh, you might have heard a thing called bolting where all of a sudden uh, a plant like so this is where you don't see a flower in the morning time um, on let's say I guess today's Tuesday uh, but you wouldn't see any dandelions in your yard and then two days later all of a sudden there's dandelions everywhere and you're like how did that happen well that is the elongation of this subapical meristem and all of a sudden enough of those enzymes and enzymes the plant hormones actually made that flower grow very quickly Next, we have intercalary meristems, uh, separated by the apical meristems, uh, by mature cells and tissues. Uh, these are going to retain their ability to divide. So these are above nodes in the lower portion, and they will divide and elongate in order, so like this is the reason why leaf blades still grow after mowing. Um, this is, so we have, so here we are with, with uh, a, a grass blade which has an alternate leaf arrangement and so after you cut the top part off actually plants grow from the bottom up so this will continue to push up out of the stem and that is the intercalary meristems uh, that actually push those leaves back up oh right here elongating the leaf from the bottom so they're growing up, not at the top, but um, I guess that's kind of like our fingernails, right? So, um, you know, it's not this part, let me use a different finger. <laughs> it's not this part that grows. It's not, it's not the tip that grows, right? It actually grows from here. Leaves grow the exact same way. They grow from the bottom up. So we're really cutting off the oldest part of the fingernail when we clip our fingernails. When we cut the grass, we're cutting off the oldest part of that leaf. Now, lateral, um, lateral meristems are for secondary growth, and they are below the apical and the subapical, and they continue the length of the plant axis. So this is going to be uh, the vascular cambium, 
the xylem and the phloem are the main, are our two primary lateral mare stems. Um, the xylem is what takes the nutrients from the roots to the leaf, so up the plant, and then the phloem takes the, takes the products of photosynthesis down to the roots. So xylem goes up, phloem goes down. And then we have the cork cambium, which is kind of the bark of this. And so uh, this is where the, the plant starts to grow this way. So trees, for instance, um, the rings around the trees is, indic is an indicator of the growth. And that is going to be the cork cambium. And if you think about it, they really grow outward, right? So laterally out. So growing out when you think about lateral. Then we have leaf axle meristems, um, and those can actually turn into different types of lateral meristems. And uh, we'll typically have some plant hormone that is um, controlling that. We can remove this apical meristem to improve lateral branching. So if you, if you remove the meristem, the plant will grow this way rather than up. So moving laterally, right? Rather than vertically. Some, so we mentioned that we have a, um, a, we have uh, meristematic tissues and then permanent tissues. So uh, uh, a, um, an example of a simple permanent tissue is going to be the epidermis. So we have a simple permanent tissue, which is our epidermis. This is the skin. This is a, our skin is known as the epidermis. They have parenchyma which are going to be important in um, gas transports. We have sclerenchyma, so epidermis, parenchyma, sclerenchyma, colenchyma, C O L L E N C H Y M A. Cork, which is going to be our cambium, so like the like the bark of the tree. So five simple five permanent tissues, five simple tissues, the epidermis, the parenchyma the sclerenchyma, colenchyma, and cork. As I mentioned before, this is the single layer around the entire plant. So this is the epidermis. We have one single layer of, of cells around our entire body, right? Um, now, so also I like to mention that these are like, we're talking about cells now. So this is at the microscopic level. This isn't like, oh, look, there's, a, there's the epidermis cell. Like, we need a microscope in order to determine this single layer of cells that surrounds the plant. And then, so, um, they're typically colorless, um, unless we're talking about the guard cells, which contain the chlorophyll. But we have these trichomes, which are um, on leaves, which are the hairs. So a trichome is a hair. And so you would really have to look maybe with a magnifying glass in order to see the uh, plant or like the hairs on the plant of the trichomes. And then also root hairs. And so our root hairs are going to increase that surface area. So very fine structures uh, that do perform some function. Next, we have the parenchyma that are under the epidermis, and they're active in photosynthesis. So if they're injured, they can become merist meristematic. And so meristematic tissues have the ability to differentiate cells, right? So you might injure a cell and it becomes meristematic again and could potentially differentiate into another cell or a different type of cell. There's that possibility but it is going to regenerate tissues. 
that are going to help uh, heal that wound. Next, we have the sclerenchyma. Those are going to be thick walled, uh, and it's going to be kind of like our stems and our barks and our shells. So that's where you would find sclerenchyma. Next, we have collenchyma, which is going to support the tissue of the young stems, also the petioles and the leaf veins. So, kind of has a role in the structure of. Um, how leaves actually get their nutrients. So like the veins of the, of the leaf uh, that are going to transport some of those nutrients to those different organs. And then finally the cork. And so uh, this picture is showing that they remove the cork from this or the bark from this cork tree. And this tree is not harmed that it will begin to form it, like the cork will begin to grow from this tree, like to form that outer protective covering. Next, we have our complex tissues. So the xylem and the phloem. Do you remember which one does what? How do how do how do plant how do plant leaves get the water? Which one of these is responsible for transporting water and nutrients to the plant leaf? The xylem and the phloem transports from the leaf to the root. So root to leaf, leaf to root. And so it's a big circle, right? So it's a big, it's just a, a big circle where we're moving things up the plant and then back down the plant. So from the roots to all parts of the plants, I just use the leaf because that's kind of the, that's kind of the end goal. That's that's where the last that's the last part of the plant that is going to receive those to receive that water and those nutrients so they're really just long tubes joined end to end so it conducts water through those pits and it has fibers that kind of give it a thick wall so we want to be able to, so since it conducts water we would think it needs to be waterproof, right? We don't want water leaking out of the xylem as it's trying to transport everything up the plant. Here we go. So, where are we at? really difficult to see. I do apologize for that. That's that's kind of hard to tell where the xylem is. There are the rings. Not really sure what they put this in here for. Um, you can see that we are talking about parenchyma here, um, some more parenchyma over here. So our phloem is going to be living cells that are going to conduct food and metabolite throughout the plant, primarily from the leaves because that's where we're making photosynthesis. That's where we're making our um, sugars and our metabolites through photosynthesis that's going to conduct that from the leaf throughout the plant so that they can continue to function. Uh, that's the food source. Uh, we have these seed tubes which are basically going to carry them down um, into their uh, respective places. There are companion cells and also phloem fibers the, that provide some support and they're also going to assist with metabolic activities. Now this picture is showing some of those um, different companion cells. Here we go. So this being the cross section of a plant, we have the epidermis, which is the skin. We have the cortex, which is like an extra protective layer. We have the primary phloem, 
this vascular cambium, and then we have the xylem as well. So everything is going up the center of the plant. And we want this protected, right? We don't want anything to happen to the food transport up to the leaves. And then finally, um, when it comes back down, it's okay to be a little bit closer because we're going to end up, we might end up losing some of that as well. Uh, but we've already produced it. All right, so that's going to end section 6 1. Again, like I said, um, some of these videos, uh, this was a very long chapter. It was like a hundred and some odd slides. Uh, so rather than sit there through two hours worth of a video, you just have like 45 minutes of a video and then you can go on about your day. All right. Um, so I will see you in the next section.